The left has fallen into this kind of hilarious little cycle because we see them, because we see who they are, and because Joe Biden is just a kind of moderate face they have put on this leftist program that they have, and because we see that too, the leftists speak up, they get caught, then they say that they didn't say what they said, and then they silence anyone who opposes them. This is a cycle they go through again and again. They say, we're going to defund the police, and you say, you can't do that. We didn't say we were going to defund the police. The Republicans said that. But yes, you did. Shut up. It goes again and again and again. L listen, here's James Clyburn, right? All they want to do is make sure that people can identify themselves. All the Republicans want to do is make sure that people identify themselves when they go to vote, that they can't, that they want to protect against fraud. So James Clyburn, so people said, you know, most people of all races, most people think, yes, of course you should identify yourself. So James Clyburn, who's the majority whip, who still has a bit of a sense of reality left. He's the guy who engineered Biden's victory because he realized nobody was going to a vote for Elizabeth Warren. Nobody was going to vote for the radicals like Kamala Harris. So he's the guy who engineered marshalling the black vote to boost up Biden so at least people would have a moderate face to vote for. And he says, no, 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 we don't want, we, we have nothing against uh, voter IDs. Cut four. There's not a single time that I've ever voted in my entire life and I'm going to be 81 years old next week. There's not a single time that I voted when I did not ID myself. What I spoke about was allowing an ID, a picture ID of a hunter's license to be good, but of a student activity card to be no good. That's the kind of voter ID law that I'm talking about that's unfair. I've said that all of my life. I don't know why you guys keep misrepresenting what I said. I have never said that you should not have voter ID. When I got my voter registration card, I keep it in my wallet, and when I go to vote, I presented that every time. And I say to them, I am Jim Clyburn, this is my ID, and I want to vote. I've always had voter ID. And that's why the representative earlier told us no Democrat has ever been against voter ID. No Democrat has ever been against voter ID. First they say it, no voter ID. Then they tell you they didn't say it. Here's Kamala Harris when she was asked about voter ID. What's wrong with voter ID? Cut seven. In some people's mind, that means, well, you're going to have to um, Xerox or, or, or photocopy your ID to send it in to prove you are who you are. Well, there are a whole lot of people, especially people who live in rural communities, who don't. There's no Kinko's. There's no Office Max near them. People have to understand that when we're talking about voter ID laws, be clear about who you have in mind and what would be required of them to prove who they are. <laughs> that sounds like she's against voter ID. Shut up. Shut up. No. <laughs> it's the cycle. The same thing. They say it. We protest. They say they didn't say it. And then they shut you up. They take you off Facebook. They take you off Twitter. They do whatever they have to do to silence the truth. I mean, it's the same thing with it's the same thing with crime. They defund the police in Oakland. They they didn't they said they were going to defund the police. And then they they cut the budget a little bit. They redirected funds. Of course, there's a criminal explosion. I mean, the whole thing. This is happening in L.A., too, when you have. Uh, DAs, you have these George Soros backed liberal DAs who will not prosecute laws, who won't institute bail, who just arrest people, say, don't don't murder anybody anymore and, and be gone with you, my fine friend. You know, you have all these murders. So in, in Oakland, the black people who are frequently the victims of these high crimes go out to protest. They go out to protest the fact that their people are being killed. 70% of black people think that crime is a crisis in the country. White Antifa thugs show up and shout them down. Here's a little bit of that video, 27. You don't have a right to be here! How black children are dying in the street every day at the hands of the police. Don't 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 That's a lie. That's a lie. There are, hundreds, there are not hundreds of people dead at the hands of police this year. There are in this country. You can make a list of, of thousands of people if you go back in history. We talk about right now. What do you have against safety in Oakland? What do you have against stopping the violence? Why are you trying to disrupt something that's trying to be positive? Why do you have to be you, you disrupting something that's positive? We're trying to save our people. We're trying to save our people. You are not our people. Get the f out. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm laughing. I'm laughing because it's so absurd. It's so incredibly absurd. 
First, they say defund the police. Then they say Republicans said to defund the police, not us. Then when the consequences show up and people say, hey, you know, our people are dying here. Our people are dying. And Tifa shows up to shut them down and silence them and shout them down. What, what, what does it mean? I mean, how can anybody even put in their heads the fact that white men in masks show up into a black neighborhood to silence them when they are mourning their dead and protesting the rise in crime? And that's Antifa. It's kind of just like, you know, what did, what did they say it over at NPR? They said, oh, it's just like when the guys, the Antifa people invaded Normandy to fight the fascists there. It's kind of like that, except completely the opposite. Un- unbelievable. And they always say it's just the messaging. I love it. It's just the messaging. It's not, it's not the actual fact of what they're doing. It's not the actual socialism. It's not the actual Antifa antipathy toward the police. It's not the actual racism that's involved in CRT. Here's the old Clinton hand, James Carville, saying, oh, these people, it's the language. They're all into the language. Cut three. The overwhelming number of Democrats, most important constituents in our party, are blacks and suburban women. They're not into this. All right. And, and, and you know, again, we're seeing it time and time again. We're letting a, a, a noisy wing of our party define the rest of us. And my point is, we can't do that. I think these people are all kind of nice people. I think they're very naive and they're all into language and identity. And that, that, that's all right. They're not storming the Capitol, they, but they're not winning elections. <laughs> it's all about winning elections. You know, it's the same with critical race theory. They come out with this incredibly hateful, incredibly racist idea, this critical race theory. And they're teaching it in schools and they're teaching it in K through 12 and they're insisting on teaching it. And pe- the parents, the parents start to show up and protest. And the news media says, uh, no, 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 that didn't happen at all. This is, uh, here's This is from Media Research Center. They put together this montage, 23. State after state, Fox News and Republicans, conservatives have whipped up a moral panic about so-called critical race theory. This is just the latest outrage device over at Fox, is it not? The bad faith effort by Republicans to make critical race theory a wedge issue. By the way, critical race theory is enormously useful. It's a graduate level construct. It's not taught in K through 12. And again, it is not being taught in grade schools. No one is teaching critical race theory K through 12. Just to be clear, can you just repeat it? It is a law school text. What is critical race theory? What is critical race theory? I suspect it's not as major an issue as we've made it out to be in the media. And here's a montage, again, from Media Research Center of teachers, grade school teachers, talking about critical race theory, cut 24. Racism is systematic. So it's impossible to be systematically racist to white people in an American society. Teaching that systemic racism exists isn't in itself a racist practice. That is the first step toward healing, which this country desperately needs. I am part of the equity and racial justice team at my school district and have been mentoring students of color who have been leading these changes in our district. They have implemented new curriculum that is unwhitewashed. These children's quote unquote history books are so problematic. When kids learned about the American Revolution, we learned about one black man on the front of the book and everybody else in here is white. Even though I'm a kindergarten teacher, I am very active in education reform. In honor of the anniversary of George Floyd's death, let's have a hot take on education. Let's talk about how schools marginalize African-American students. There is going to be a right side of history and a wrong side of history. When you stay out of it, you're on the wrong side. (laughs) Say it, deny you say it, and shut up anybody who says you're still saying it. You know, left and I don't divide politics anymore between left and right. I divide it between friends of the founding and enemies of the founding. If you're a friend of the founding, if you believe in limited government, if you believe in the sacred right of the individual to speak freely, to defend himself, uh, to be a full, complete Free, uh, free individual. I think there's lots of compromises that could be made on people on the left and right of those uh, of the, of the, that system. Uh, the people who say I want to be a total individual, I want to be completely individualistic, and the people who say no, you have a debt to the community. There, there is a conversation to be had there. You know, some you know sometimes pe- people on the right say, well, there should only be private charity. That works if you live in a small community where everybody goes to the same church or everybody has the same general beliefs. Maybe everybody trusts each other, likes each other. But in an America, a multi-ethnic America, where there are so many different kinds of people, so many people who distrust each other, who don't even know one another, 
who don't even understand how people who owe each other lives. I, I could see where there has to be some kind of government system for keeping people, uh, you know, from falling into the gutter, from disappearing off the grid. I, I understand that. That is a conversation you can have. But it's all about reality. It is all about what really helps. What really helps is giving people hand up to get them back into the workforce, not the kind of uh, great society system that basically uh, inculcates dependency and breaks apart families and is the reason is the reason we have so much dysfunction, not just in, in black communities, but in all poor communities that live off the dole. Listen, there's a tension in America and in Western civilization between the individual and society. That tension is what makes us who we are. But these are not people on the left who are actually trying to resolve that tension in a creative way. These are people who just desperately want all the power in their corner so they can crush the individual spirit that has made this country what it is and has made this country so incredibly great. Mm -hmm.